I made a lot of mistakes in my life, but generally speaking, I've been very, very fortunate. I mean, you know, think about it. Rudy, think about it. When I said, uh, I told you the story about when people asked Renee, what did you see in this guy? I didn't make that up. I'm a D's, Dems, and those kid. I had a, I, I have forgotten most of my childhood because I want to. It was terrible. My, my parents were professional poor people. I mean, we lived in a very poor area, but they were professional, my, my, family, uh, my father and mother. I didn't learn to brush my teeth till I was in my teens, which has cost me millions of dollars over the years, and pain and agony, et cetera. And, uh, and we had no money. I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, my, our kitchen table was the, I'll give you a general idea of my life as a kid. My kitchen, our kitchen table was the bathtub with a heavy metal thing on top of it, which was then the kitchen table. So that when you wanted to use the bathtub, we didn't have a shower, that was it, in the kitchen. You'd have to lift this heavy lid off the bathtub and then you would take a bath. My brother, who's long gone now, was five years older than I, he would take a bath. And then when he got out of the bath, they put me in the same water that he bathed in, okay? To save the hot water, et cetera. So that's just one example of uh, my childhood. Uh, I never heard in any of my childhood the phrase, I love you. Never. Never happened. Uh, so that's the kind of background I had. So basically, I'm telling you that I was fortunate to get out of that. And you know something? Card magic saved my life. Card magic saved my life. And that's the story that, to me, is very important because I was the shyest kid in the world. I'm talking about to the point of sickness. Mm. When I was a kid, I wouldn't raise my hand to go to the bathroom when I was in school. So I don't have to tell you the end result of that, you know. Yeah. Uh. yeah. You know, Harry, you're, you're a good man. Yeah, I, was th I, I, was, I wanted to talk about this. I know maybe this is a little personal, but you get, you get a bad rap for your ego. <laughs> okay, right. But as I read, as I read your memoir, for someone who never heard the words, I love you, okay. and whose father didn't just punish you, but really punched you, I mean, there's this sense in which I think we, you, 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 you're almost trying to compensate for some of the well, lack. That well, that's what happened, Rudy. I overcompensated, and I'm aware of that, because the kind of shyness I had was the worst that anybody had, so I had to do the ego almost in, you know, in order. So, it, But you know what? Deep, deep down, when I started to do the memory act, you know what was the hardest thing for me to do? Walk to the people having dinner, to walk over cold, and ask for their names because that was the opening of my act. So the shyness was still there. It still is, but not as much, obviously. I've over, overcompensated, overcompensated. So I was still shy. It was still difficult for me to do that, to go until I, again I overcame it. And I became a little more known. And people at that table would say, hey, Mr. Lorraine, aren't you going to remember our names? You know, when I became mm -hmm. known, it became a different thing. So I was able to handle everything uh, back, back, backwards or differently. But now, that shyness, when I tell people, like I'm telling you now, that I was the shyest kid in the world, they say, you gotta be kidding. Because I sure don't show that sure. now, you know? But yeah, that's the truth. And again, like the dyslexia made it better for me, I guess maybe the shyness worked for me.